Broadcasting from the heart of London to your heart. Radio Herald Hill. Hello and good morning. My name's Annette Gregory and I'd like to introduce to you my special guest today. This is Councillor, Mayor of Hoverin, Mr Brian Eaglin. Good That's morning it. to good you. Good morning to you. And, uh, it's thank nice you for, to see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to see us or letting us come to see you today. So, it's lovely to see people in Haven. We love thank it. You. Can we have a little bit of background information about yourself? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, I was uh, elected as Mayor in the Millennium, so uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to serve my borough uh, twice, which is unusual. It's only happened about four or five times before, over the time that uh, we've had a Mayor in Havering. Uh, I was actually born in Havering, uh, I was born in Collier Road, actually born at the house in the Ascension Road, uh, and the wife was actually born in, in, in Bromford. Uh, I actually met her at school. So I've known my wife now for 50 odd years. So um, yeah, we went to the same school. Uh, I know lots about Havering because naturally my mum used to bring me to the market when they had all the animals there. So traditionally, uh, yeah, a true Romford guy. And also, well, they sometimes say uh, Collier Rowite because I was brought up in Collier Row. And I know all the bits and pieces and the changes that have happened uh, in Collier Row, which is really what has to happen, really. Uh, you just can't stand still. Uh, I know I went to a um, church service last Friday and uh, they asked me to do a little speech, which I did. And uh, they, I actually said that um, I was actually born in Ascension. And somebody said to me, what, the church? And I said, no, Ascension Road, which was only two streets away. Uh, but yeah, going back to my background, um, I was in sales and marketing. Uh, I worked for a major blue chip company for 20 odd years, uh, then moved on from there um, and uh, always worked. You know, I packed up work when I was in my 60s, which I was fortunate really. Um, I've always been involved in charities, even from a young lad of 11, which wouldn't happen now, where I used to take small boys over to um, Haynook Forest and uh, we used to play other teams and I used to put them on a bus get on the bus, no parents, over there, look after them, have a game of football, get them on the bus and get them back to Collier Road. And I've always been involved in that, always been involved in raising money from a very, very young age. Um, <clears throat> some of the things I've done, uh, I was involved in the community association for 25 years, I built it from nothing to when I left 25 years ago, uh, which is a superb place now. Been involved in youth football um, for nine years, and uh, pleased to say that I had two boys play for England school boys and it's like anything I do really, it's got to be the best. Not being big headed when I say that, but I believe that if you're going to do something, go in and do it well. Um, and the same as the, the mayoral ship, you know, I do believe that you've got to give time and I'm fortunate enough to have a nice wife because she actually supports me. So wherever we go, we are together and we can communicate and she's very good at doing that as well so if that helps you that's where we are. That's brilliant, thank you. What school did you meet your wife at? Yeah I met, uh, I actually met the wife at Chase Cross School which is now Bower Park. I went to Gobelin School which was opposite which was now shut down and it's built, it's been, now been built on and the wife went to Clock House Lane. So she actually lived in a wooden house in Collier Road which is not there no more. Oh, yeah, not so, down. Yeah, not yeah. down, rebuilt, yeah. That was opposite Maguire's Motors. The motor place is still there. Mm. But yeah, that's where we met. We met school. She actually got me the cane because I nicked a bag and she <laughs> grasped me up. <laughs> True confessions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So how did you get into politics? Well, basically, it's, strong. it's a funny thing, really, because I was involved in a community association and it was right near a station. And I wanted to be able to turn the car park into a car, uh, the, the, the car park where the, um, the uh, community association people used to park and people just used to park in there anyway and I thought this can't be right uh, we've got, we're near a station let's get the commuter park in there, charge them and it'll help us pay our rent and uh, it was really strange at one time it was an election time oh, going back 1996 father-in-law had just died and I was very close to him and um, <clears throat> knock on the door like it always is. Oh, have you got any problems here? Yeah. Um, you know, can you help us with this? Council won't really let us have this car park, but it's not a problem. Anyway, this guy at the time took it away, sorted my problems out, 
and that was it. So that was good for me, that was good for our community association. And about four weeks later, another knock on the door, and somebody said, oh, you can't deliver some leaflets for us, can you? And I said, well, um, you've done me a favour, I'll do you a favour. And then a little while after that, another knock on the door, would you like to join us? A bit of a low ebb, really, because it could have been the Mormons knocking on my door because we lost the father in law, Bunny lost the dad. And um, I just said, yeah, and I just got involved in it from there, really. I'm not, I'm not a politician, I'm more of a community guy and we'll help people. That's, that's me. Do what I possibly can. And how have you enjoyed the uh, role? Oh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, when we did it the first time, we didn't have grandchildren. But now we have, we've got four. Uh, and they like it as well, they like Nanny and Granddad to be in there. We can tell them of all our experiences, where we've been. And I was very fortunate this year, um, when all the London boroughs became 50 years old, um, there was a special banqueting uh, um, uh, dinner at uh, uh, Barking Town Hall. And when I got there, you have to sign in because of security, etc. And they said, would you put this little badge on your lapel? Well, that was a little sign I didn't know that when the meal was over, uh, we went outside, all the London mayors were had to line up and that was for the Queen to come and find me and had a chat with the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, so that was really a highlight. Yeah, but we incredible. really love the children coming to the town hall, we love it. You know, they're all different little stories they got, we like going to their schools, so they're our future really. And we just feel that, you know, we're serving the borough and we want them to say, oh the mayor's is good, he does this, he talks to us on how we are. Uh, and, and they go back with that and we've had some lovely, lovely letters from the children, which is, yeah. Mm. So um, that's what we like doing, really. Yeah, you're brilliant down to earth, which is what people Yeah, everybody says that. We are, we, you are what you are. You can't be anything else because you just don't get caught out. So mm. we are what we are and, you know, we, we're always there to help people. Simple yeah, as that, really. The wife does a lot. She uh, <clears throat> has been involved in uh, singing and tap dancing for 35 years mm. and goes round to community halls and entertains, shall I say, elderly people. We're not young ourselves. <laughs> and what would you say are your greatest achievements? Ah, oh, what can I say my greatest achievements? Over my lifetime or since I've been there? If you say over my lifetime, being able to do what I can for my community that I live in and my borough, my greatest achievements, well, if you're going to look at sports side, there's not many people can say they had two boys, youth boys play for England. Mm. They can't really say that. My achievements, meeting the Queen and got two lovely kids, um, children, uh, you know, born again and they've got to give me four lovely grandchildren, so what more can you wish for? And I've got health and happiness, so yes. what's your achievement? You know, where, where do you go from there, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> always done, done lots of things. Um, I mean, I know when I was the, the mayor last time in the millennium, my aim was, because it was, it's, everybody wanted a... Uh, um, really celebrate the millennium. <clears throat> so I got involved with three other guys, pulled all it together, and we had a great big carnival that went from Harold Court School, and it was at the the last horses left Harold Court School when I was at the beginning at Harrowwood Station. So you can imagine how big that carnival was. We went into Harrowwood Park, uh, and we set it all up, we planned it all, and we had a tremendous day there. Um, we had a big um, arena where people could uh, be entertained. We had all different stalls on the outside. In the evening, we had an Abba tribute band, we had a rock band, we had a fire, and we did that all ourselves. Uh, the four of us, I was sort of the main stab behind it all, moaning at people, but you know, someone has to do the moaning to make sure everything is pulled together. And there is a seat outside the post office in Station Road, and it says a day to be remembered. And there's also a, a tree in Harrowwood Park, a day to be remembered. But we had 7,000 people there, and we never had a bit of trouble which was credit to everybody that attended. So that's the sort of things. Yeah. And sometimes I forget some of the things that I have been involved in. Um, people say, oh, you really done that? Yeah, of course. And uh, at, when I was the mayor last time, I wanted to put on a variety show at the Queen's Theatre. Done it. Great. Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, this time, I'm going to do it this time. And I've done it. So it's a complete sellout and has been for the last three weeks. When you think there's 500 seats in that, the Queen's uh, Theatre never sold them. I've got on the phone and rung all different people up. So that is next Sunday, and I'll tell you it's going to be a super night. Absolutely super night. You've rolled that in quite nicely, because that was giving my next question. What can we ah. expect from the show? Oh, ah, well, there you go. It's funny you should say that. <laughs> my mind. Because like a true salesman, I always have a nice programme. Lovely. Now, 
Do you really often see programmes like that at the Queen Theatre? And I will show you, I know you've got it on camera, there's me and my wife, uh, and then you get what we've actually said, and I'm going to show you this because I think it's a, you can cut it if you wish. Some of the people that have actually sponsored me and um, paid for the programme to be printed. We've got the acts, we've got that lovely young lady there, 16 years of age. She's an opera singer and went to one of our schools in Havering. Jerry Sweeney is the director. Paul Rhodes, his wife used to belong to the Tillich Hills. You wouldn't remember that. But, um, Beverly's the co-director. The, uh, the, yeah, the co-director. Uh, she's got it. And I'll go to the middle page and I will tell you. We've got um, an, an excerpt from Oliver. We've got the British uh, Legion Band opening the show. Um, well, I well, mustn't miss anybody here. So we've got the British Legion Band. We've got uh, an excerpt from Oliver. We've got song from a soul girl singer. Uh, we've got a, a, a master magician. Okay, so it is a proper variety. We've got young Courtney, superb opera singer, 16 years old. Nicky Clark. Nick Clark yep. from the Roulettes, yep, he's in it. We've got a Frankie Valley, we've got a Shadows, and uh, we've got a magician. So, you know, and then we've got our Ali Cats, which sings uh, show songs. So it's going to be a really special night. Something for bar. everyone. Something for yeah, everybody. Yeah. I've actually got 14 mayors coming from other boroughs, which I think is an, uh, another achievement as well, really, really well. together. Yeah. I'm going to have uh, some magicians out, uh, well, not just magicians, jugglers outside, um, you know, performing so everybody comes in. Hopefully there'll be a red carpet out there mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully some greenery to, to show all what we're about in our borough. Uh, and I wanted to do it, but that's me. And as yeah. I said to you earlier on, that's what the mayor does. He wants to do the best. And if you aim for the best and you don't get it, then you've done 98%, haven't you? Yeah. But definitely. that's that programme. And it's not the same as it was 16 years ago, but it's quite similar. So that is the mayor's variety show and the mayoress's variety show. And because we call it the mayor and mayoress's variety show, it's up to the wife as well to say, well, I'd like a little bit of money to go my way. Yeah. So I have my charity, but because she gets involved in that, I think it's right to do, really. Going back um, to last time when I was mayor, um, I got involved with, uh, because the wife actually worked in the hospital, <clears throat> I got, we got involved with the Humpty Dumpty Bill, which was a special baby care unit at Harrowwood Hospital. Mm. I'm going to say this with a big head, and you can cut it if you like. <laughs> but once again, I was a lot younger, and a lot of enthusiasm. I've still got it these days, but... I was a bit, when, when you start to get old, you get near 70, it um, slows you down a little bit. But that actual year, being mayor, I raised £150,000, which is a considerable amount of money. Now, when you're looking at today's standards, what, well, I don't know, 250 is a quarter of a million over. You know, it's a lot of money. I always said that it wouldn't happen again this year, but we, we set a target of 25, we've broken that target. So we're quite happy now, and I just think our charities will be. That's incredible. But that's what you have to do. But as I say, it don't come easily. You have to go out and get it. And uh, a lot of these people that are sponsoring me in this programme this time, as people that I knew 16 years ago, so I can't be that horrible, can I? <laughs> no, definitely not. How do you um, select the acts that you want to go to? <clears throat> well, what I actually did, we went round to the schools. When you go visiting schools, I was at a prize giving night, and that's where I saw a young Courtney. She got on a, prior, a prize, she left school, and she sang that night, and she made my ears on my arm stand up, and I thought, oh, I'd love you at my show. Went to ask her, she did it. Um, all the acts are doing it for free of charge. We've been round to different places, and I just asked them, would you like to appear in my variety show at the Queen's? Mm -hmm. Well, when you get a lot of professional guys, I don't get the opportunity to sing or perform in the Queen's Theatre, or a theatre like that. They really jumped at it. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be some special night. I know it's going to be. It sounds brilliant. I'm yeah. going. I've got tickets. I'm really excited. Are you going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where'd you get your tickets from? Um, Not on the on black market, I <laughs> <laughs> No, I got it from the Queen Seeds Direct. Oh, so you must be sitting in B Run. Yeah, I think they so. are. Yeah. 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 Because so. I actually took all the tickets from them. <laughs> I, but like I only it. let them have a couple of rows and I took the lot away. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to miss it. Ah, oh, no, you, you have been. Uh, as I say, it's a pity if you bring your cameras because what I'm hoping for. Is the all the uh, full team mayors that are coming? Yeah. They'll all be outside in their cars. There'll be red carpet. There should be some greenery there. The hat side of the Queen Theatre should look good. Yeah. Got jugglers. Yeah. So when you get there, there'll be a bit. And they come into the Queen Theatre. We want to sell our programmes. 
happening. So where did the idea come from? Well, going writing? back all those years ago, I wanted to do it. And I'll tell you, once again, this is just me. This is how I like to do it. The Queen always does a variety show at the Blaney. And I used to watch it on the telly and I used to think, oh, them acts, I'm not too happy with all them acts. And I thought, I'm going to put one of them on and that's going to be better. And the programme's going to be better. So this is the programme I've done 16 years ago. I know you. Yeah, so it's similar oh, wow. to this one, really. There's not a lot of difference. Yeah. I don't think we look much older. No, I'm not. And um, that was taken, actually, at Chase Cross School. Okay. Um, but the acts, we did the same sort of acts. Um, uh, and we had dancing. Uh, we had more dancing to uh, back then. But I will be honest with you, you wouldn't believe this. I spoke to that lady years ago, and she wanted, she directed the show. Being a bit naive, she said to me, what are you going to do about the sound? I went, just put a couple of speakers on the stage, that'll be fine. She went, Mr. Mayor, that won't work. She said, my husband will do it. I said, oh, will he? She said, yeah, he, he used to be in rock bands. I said, oh, perhaps he will. I, she said, I know he will. And do you know what? you never believe this. If I tell you some of the things this guy was involved in, right, he was involved in the mind benders, the tremolos, the equal, like, equal, uh, with, uh, equal Edison Lighthouse and Morph Sixes bands. He was also involved with Matthew Southern Comfort and Andy Williams. He actually did the sound for me that night. And she said she'd do it again. But to be honest with you, she must be, I would say, maybe in her 70s. And I didn't think it was fair to support that sort of honour. I noticed the price, price has gone down for the... Price has gone yeah, down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just said we do it for two. But what happened last time, if you can cut this if you like, I didn't have the money to produce that. So a printer of mine, he's not there no more, but he will be at the show. Um, he said, I'll do that for you. Mm. I said, well, I've got no money. I said, I'll tell you what you will do. You do the programme, you sell the programme, you didn't have the money. So it didn't cost me anything. But what a lovely programme. Yeah. But this yeah. time I managed to get a sponsor for the programme and of course I've got sponsors to be in in the programme as well which have given me money but the main sponsor is Fultz they've given me a lot quite a lot of money to pay for the theatre so and once again you know I've never lost contact with them um, I always say if you're nice to people and you're not rude to people that people always help you won't they yeah definitely so, no, it's very good yeah, so the show you want it to be a knockout, I believe mm. you, mate. Um, Can't wait. Really looking forward to it, I really am, you know. And uh, tell us about the charities and your support of Uniwork. Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're doing First Step, um, which, uh, well, first of all, we're going to give some money to the neonatal, um, which is because we had a little tie with that, that was our first charity. Uh, they've got lovely equipment, we just feel there may be, uh, you know, something that the nurses may want to help them. Uh, and then we're doing First Step, which is like a knock-on, Children, if they come from hospital and they've got disabilities, they I've been over to their, their place. You know, we, we, we'll help them out. Uh, we want to buy them something and also perhaps give them some money. Uh, but as I say, once you go round uh, and you see other charities that really struggle, and that's why the wife said, Look, it's the mayor of mayors, it's rightly shown, it's not just the mayors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want a bit of input into it, which I think is right. And if we've reached our target, I don't think anybody will complain what we've actually achieved. No, and definitely. also there's other people out there that really need some help. So that's what we... And we did that um, 16 years ago. We actually helped other charities because we raised all that money. So yeah. <clears throat> we've reached our target. So after that, we've got a, we've got a Mayor's Ball as well, uh, which is being staged at the Rougemont, Rougemont uh, in Brentwood, which used to be called... Um, what did that used to be called years ago? Um, I'll remember it in a minute. But Lisa Cannings is running the show for me, uh, and in January it was sold out, and it's not happening until May. Wow, so, incredible. and you get 180 people there, mm -hmm. and, and, and Lisa's very good. She's got, I must plug it, she's got a company called Abbey. It's to be known as Abbey Antiques, it's called Abbey now. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're a local company in Romford. It used to, the, the, uh, the Rouge one used to be called the New World Inn. Uh, where everybody used to go for their discos. Mm -hmm. So we're going there, we're going to have a good night. Got a good singer, Cabaret Daryl King. He does the circuits locally. So we're really going to have a party night because there'll be four days before I pack up and, and I know the chief set will be there and she's retiring so we could say it's like our last supper. Oh, are you not going to stand again? Uh, well, naturally, when you're mayor, it does take a, a toll on you because of your time. 
if it ever happens in politics that I'll get the opportunity, some people keep saying to me, oh, you'll come back for the third time. But we just have to see, you've got to be a local councillor before you'd even be selected to be a mayor anyway. Um, so we'll have another little go. But unfortunately, and I know people sometimes want to go on forever, but you get a time in your life where you get to a certain age and you think, is it, when's it time to go? And I've always been able to do that. Whatever, ever I've been involved in, whatever. Lots of things, and I've always known it's the time to go. And that, I've always believed that. When it was the same with my football team, with them boys for nine years, a lot of them I knew from, you know, when I was very weeny, eight years of age, and we was fortunate we won a cup final over at um, Chigwell. And uh, we beat this team that nobody thought we would beat. And we won it, and everybody was happy. And I went in there and I went, boys, that's it. No more. <laughs> and that was it, and it was time to go. Mm -hmm. Because those boys become 16. I knew what was going to happen. They wouldn't have had the dedication. They'd have been out with their girlfriends. They'd have been starting work. So you have to know when it's time to go. And I've done that all my life. And my wife says, I don't know how you do it. I said, but that's what you have to do. You have to say, right, that's it. I'm not doing it no more. And that's what I do. And, uh, Is there anything that you haven't done that you'd like to do? I've just seen a bit more of the world, but I've been very fortunate. And what else could I say? No, not really. I'm, I'm not a greedy person. Mm -hmm. People used to say to me, if you'd have put all your energy into doing voluntary work and helping people in your community, and as Del Bob would say, you'd have been a millionaire. But I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. And if you've got your health, what more do you want? It's very important. You know, it is important, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people can have loads of money and not be happy. You know, but I've always worked hard. Mm -hmm. and I'm quite comfortable in life. Um, and we enjoy ourselves. So what more can you wish for, really? No. Not really, is it? You've got it sorted. Yeah, I've always tried to do that, you know, do that way, really. I think sometimes that's how you can get on, isn't it? You know, especially in sales and marketing. You always have to set a budget, you have to plan for the future, um, and that's what I did really. So, yeah, very fortunate with my work. Um, I won a, a competition and went to Brazil. In actual fact, I went back there, took the wife back there two years ago to have a look around Rio and Falls and what have you. Because um, she actually, when I won up the competition, she couldn't come with me. I was a young lad in my twenties, so we went off to Rio and St Paulo and. Then we ended up here, the Iguasa Falls, right down the bottom. Picturesque site. If you ever, ever get a chance to go there, it's a lovely, it's, it's incredible. There's 300 and something waterfalls. There's enough energy to supply 25% of Brazil with its electricity. Oh, it's, yeah, it's where the three countries meet Argentina, I think it's Paraguay or Uruguay, and Argentina. But Argentina don't get anything because it's not in their country. Mm. And then I think it's Paraguay or Uruguay sell some of the electricity back to Brazil. Fabulous place. And the wife always wanted to go, so I took her there. So that was a lovely experience for her, you know. Uh, and it did pay off because, if I can just tell you if you're interested, when, when we uh, decided to go, I took some photos with me. What I took all those years ago. And my friend said to me, what are you taking them for? I said, you just wait, they will help us out when we get there. And when we got into Rio, Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro, they've got the Sugarloaf Mountains, which uh, um, they've got cable carts that take you up to them. And the story is that a sugar ship sunk in the sea, and from the sugar, these mountains uh, came out of the water. But that's only an old wives' tale. And when we got there, we went to pay our money, and I said, no, I said, look, I said, if you're a pensioner, you get it half price. And they went, well, how are we going to get that? I went, the photographs. So I got my photographs out and I said to the people at the desk, look, that's me, all them years ago. No! And I showed them all the pictures of how it used to be. So they let us go in as a pensioner, which was great. <laughs> so we got to the first stage. I wouldn't go to the top. I'm not very keen on heights. And when we got to the top of the first uh, um, mountain, they had an old cable car that was on the show, and that was one that I went in. And I showed all the little, and some of the guys around said, look, that's, they couldn't believe it. And then we went off to, down to the uh, Iguasa Falls, and of course the hotel that we stopped in was right in the jungle, when I was 20 odd. 
but now it's more of a national park. And this hotel had been done up, and that's where Diana and all the people stop. If you don't know it, you never get in there. Mm -hmm. It's only because I knew it. Anyway, we got in there, and it wasn't expensive, and it had all altered. But my photographs, they were so pleased because the hotel was sold, and they took all the memorabilia. So they had no photos of what the hotel was like 40 odd years ago. They used to have a helicopter base outside, that wasn't there no more. They had a new swimming pool, and I showed them the pictures of the old swimming pool. Um, some of the uh, river uh, and the falls have been corroded away, mm -hmm. but I showed them where I walked out to. They couldn't believe me. Sounds so it just shows you. So them photographs yeah. really helped us, yeah. It was a super trip, that one. I love your stories, they're brilliant. <laughs> they? yeah. so interesting. Lots to tell, really. <laughs> Sometimes you get bored, don't you? No, no, they're really interesting. It's nice to hear. Let's party. Find us online at www.radioheraldhill.co.uk or download the app. Radio Herald Hill.